a lot of people don't understand really how important the New Eurekan Poets Cafe was mm-hmm. to the poetry and spoken word scene and to, for playwrights. I saw Amiri Baraka uh, do a play there at the New Eurekan when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, to hip hop. Yeah, to hip hop. Yeah. To, to Bobito said so many so many MC started there. I think like didn't I see he said um Big Pun used to come. Absolutely. Lyrics Lounge them. was there. Yeah, Saul Williams, I think, did his Saul first Williams, poem there. Saul Williams, Jessica, everybody was there. People um, don't know Rich Medina was out here reading poems. Yeah, Rich Medina, what do he don't do? <laughs> Rich Medina does it all. Facts. Um he used to work at the at the sneaker shop that Bobito owned. In Philly, he's a DJ. One he's, of the best. He's a poet. He's a social justice activist. Yeah, Richard, uh, <laughs> he's, he's incredible. Um, now, you won this Grand Slam uh, championship at age 19. Yeah. Right, 2007. A long time ago. Seems like a world ago, right? <laughs> Let's not um, say that because we're the same age. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Pretty long. tell me about the importance of that scene and that place in your life at that time. Oh, yeah. Thank you for asking this question, because I think that what's different between how art is being made now Mm -hmm. and that time period is that we didn't have the social media relationship Mm -hmm. that people have now. So being a part of a community was really how you knew how to sharpen your chops, how to get better, how to learn what was what was what was working, what wasn't. You you perfected your craft in Mm -hmm. community with people. And so I think that especially the not just the legacy and tradition of the New York and Poets Cafe, but all that came with the those poets who came through there. We think about Miguel Algarin, um, Miguel Pinero, Miguel Algarin, rest in peace, Miguel Pinero, rest in peace. You know, you think about Pedro Pitri, you think mm. about Amiri Baraka, um, so many poets, Jane Cortez, mm. um, a lot of poets came through those spaces and they were able to shift the culture because once you have a community and an arts community, that permeates everything around it. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't realize that it's like the MCs show up there, it'd be the bartender, it'd be the, you know, the dancer, it'd be the singer. And all these people go off into their own communities and worlds. And when they leave, they leave with the remnants of the voices that were spoken over them, you know, and the things that were said and shared over them. So I think being a part of the, the New Yorican at that time, I mean, I got to train with masters. I got to sit and learn from the best and be around my elders. And mm-hmm. I, I, I was raised up under um, Abio Dun Oyewole of the Last Poets. Yes. So I got to see, you know, and then I got, I mean, come on. Then there's it, just New York at, at that time in general. There was the Schomburg and seeing, I got to see Maya Angelou, uh, you know, front row. I got to see Lucille Clifton, Ishmael, all these wow. poets that... Um, most most young people don't get exposed to. So I never grew up with an ad- inadequacy around being black or around our identity or around our culture. Like I just knew we were rich in so much. Yes. And I think having access to that was so important. Whereas now social media has made it so that people don't, you know, they don't get the type of um, workshop space to, to go up, let me try this poem and do this on right. open mic and see what the audience response is and how we communicate with each other. It's an oral tradition I come from, you That's know, right. the black radical imagination and, and what we did with the black arts movement. It's an oral tradition and it's completely related to community. So you have to have, it's having a conversation. Right. If you're just going, you know, on the internet, teach it to everybody to have a voice and just be talking and talking and talking, but no one's actually listening and people aren't learning how to actively listen and engage in discourse. So before you get hurt and be in your feelings about something, why don't we just like first think about, well, why does that hurt? Where did it come from? Mm-hmm. What is this? Is this person even real? Like, is this a real person? <laughs> You know, because the bot culture is real, is a whole mm. thing. I think we're just, it's social media is making it so that we're disconnected from our skill sets between one another in communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, just how to communicate and express one's feelings and ideas and emotions with respect and integrity and dignity for the person behind the screen. You yeah. just assume the worst rather than, hey, maybe this is somebody's daughter, somebody's son, somebody's, you know. It shouldn't take that, but yeah. that's what it's become. Yeah, the community aspect is so important. Um, Abby O'Doon, the last poets there, is hugely influential on me as well. Um, but those same communities, um, I'm a little older than you, so it's yeah. like we, we, we overlap 
Um, we have a lot of people in common, but yeah. it's a, it was a little different. Um, but I always re- remind people that my career started from the stew that I was a part of, whether it be Lyricist Lounge or New Eureka or Washington Square Park or just or even uh, to Raucous to a degree. When I got signed to Raucous, the community that formed around that um, was very, very important I to also me want to shout out Urban Word NYC, which was an organization that I had come up in mm-hmm. prior to New Eureka, and it was a... Um, a youth organization mm-hmm. that provided po- poetry workshops, um, performance opportunities, all these things. So I was like being mentored by some mm-hmm. of the greatest uh, of the greats at that time as well. So I think that was a big part of, you know, when I first heard, I didn't even think about the New Yorkian or the adult scene until some kids was like, you know, you can make money for pump from, from, <laughs> right. from reciting a poem. And I'm like, what? They were like, yeah, right. you could do a slam and get $50. And I'm like, no yes. way. <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, when you're doing poetry as a kid, you're not thinking you're going to make money off of it. You're just like, I'm just yeah. expressing my heart, you know. And you did was, Brave New Voices as well, right? Yeah, I did Brave New Voices. Yeah. I was the first, I was a part of, I got to say this proudly, but I was a part of the first uh, youth team to win nationals as a New York, New York we represented that year. So it was in the Bay no Area. Doubt. and I, I and was actually, there, I think. I was there. I think you were. I, I hosted I, that. And that was the year that I remember thinking we were going to change the world. Mm-hmm. Like, I really believed it because the poems that kids were spitting at that time, this is pre-deaf... When Stan Lathan did... Um, Death Poetry Jam. Yeah, but he, Death Poetry was Jam was on, but it wasn't the kids. They weren't following That's around right. the kids. The Brave New Voices thing. They It was before kids was on TV for poetry, which changed the entire dynamic because then people started having egos and people started wanting to be seen and mm. it changed everything. But that year, 2005, I think it was, we were able to hear poems from all over the country mm-hmm. and that was before this political consciousness moment. Yeah. So see, hearing kids, you know, 16, 15, 17, Amazing 18. Amazing pieces. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just blowing your mind. You're learning about the country and the issues in the country at that time. Bush was that, you know. Yeah. So the kids were like, fuck the government, the adults, they don't know what they're doing. And mm-hmm. they're eloquent. And I was like, man. And so I think that they, I think that that poetry community and those kids is clearly directly linked to the current cultural shift and moment we have now. Because a lot of them went off and became social workers or educators or teachers or organizers. And I think that poetry was a big place of of planting the seeds of like, what are our issues? How do we express about them? How do we tell the truth? And how do we try to do something to resolve them? And that's a big part of my upbringing. What we don't start it. Look at what we don't start it. Just the people party. When opportunity knocking and young nigga move that door. Whoa, get your foot stuck in it, call me young, go get it. They can't fuck with it, my slow won't win. What's the world with